right, let's get this stuff set up in the lathe. Okay, most lathes, you know, any lathe I should say, you can put a three jaw chuck on the headstock. That's the best way to mount this, or you can use a collet chuck. So we would put this in the, in the chuck and tighten the three jaw chuck. Okay, so now I can rotate this whole headstock. That's what I want to do. I want to rotate that spindle. The object is to get the lacer on the axis of rotation of the headstock. Okay, now the, the tail stock, sometimes they have a, a center in here. You're gonna to have to remove that center and I, I just use a three jaw chuck in the tail stock as well. There may be ways of uh, using an, some sort of adapter. If I put it in there just right, I can rotate the whole chuck. That's what I want to do. So many people just want to rotate this target in the jaws that we can't do that because the mounting ear, we have a mounting ear between this target and the center line of this, of this tail stock. So we want to find that center line of this tail stock. So we need to rotate the whole thing. And then we've started the program. I'm gonna make a new project here. What we're gonna do, the object here, is I need this headstock to be parallel to this bed, but I also need to know how flat and straight this bed is. If this bed has a twist in it, in other words, it's, it's not flat or it's not straight, it's curved, something like that. I need to fix that before I can ever make this parallel to it. If this is curved or it is hilly, there's no way that I can make this straight line parallel to a curve. So it's important that we check the flatness and straightness of this. But also, once we've determined this is flat and straight, then we can determine the angle that this has relative to the bed. I can never align this tailstock to this headstock if this is not parallel to this. In other words, if this was running off at an angle one way or the other, as I move this forward, my position would change. I need this to be running parallel to this travel of this tailstock, so I, no matter where I move the tailstock, the alignment remains constant. Now I've taken a magic marker and I've measured this every four inches, and I know I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positions. So that's what I'm gonna tell it, seven points. Starting at point number zero. The closest to the laser is gonna be point zero, the farther I get away, that's the, the higher number. I'm gonna move this in four inch increments. Okay, now the headstock and the tailstock dimensions. The headstock is bolted on here. We need to know what the dimensions are of those bolts because this will calculate shim for you. And I would measure the, the bolt pattern here and I might say this, okay, I have a six inch bolt pattern. And then it wants to know how far from the front bolt to the face where this, where the lacer's at, or the, the front of the chuck. So we would call that seven inches. The tailstock, same way, it's bolted down. So we would measure, and here I'd say this is four inches. And from here or to the, the rear of the target, call that five inches. Here we have some tolerance bands. Now I'm gonna move on to step two. We have to qualify this laser and we can physically put this beam on the axis of rotation. What we can do is invert this. Now we're gonna get numbers. Okay, these numbers, if you look on the left side, I have white numbers, vertical and horizontal white numbers. Those are my positions. The yellow numbers are angles, the vertical angle and the horizontal angle. And because this is a plus number, plus 46 thousandths per foot, that's saying the rear of this tailstock or the rear of this lacer, one of them is off to the other one, 46 thousandths per foot. If we look at the screen, it's showing it wants the lacer inverted. And we're gonna record that by hitting the record button. Okay, it records that. Now it's showing that it wants the battery on the bottom or it wants to be in the normal position. Okay, I'm gonna record this. 
And now what the computer does, it does some math. And it says, well, angular-wise, you're off this far from the axis of rotation. And that's gonna show me here. And this is telling me how far off my centers are. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a 330 seconds Allen wrench, and I'm gonna adjust till these vertical angle and horizontal angles are zero. The short end will not reach the set screws. I have to have the long end. So I'm gonna push this into the vertical angle adjustment and I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. I'm just gonna keep adjusting. Now I'm gonna do the horizontal angle. Now you see what happened to my centers? They came in less than a thousandth. That's good, that's good. We don't need to worry about that. I wanna go back and I wanna restart, clear the data. I wanna do it again to make sure that this is set and I wanna make sure I'm gonna have repeatability. It's not uncommon to have to make a couple of adjustments. If I needed to make centering adjustments, I would use the short end of the Allen wrench and adjust those. I'm gonna start here and go back toward position number one. So I'm gonna click that, and now you see it jumps there. So I'm gonna record that, and I'm gonna unlock the tailstock, put it in position, and then lock the tailstock. So record that, move it to the next position, Okay, let's click on the results. When we go to the results screen, this will tell us whether we're in tolerance or out of tolerance. Or the, I should say the vertical straightness and the horizontal straightness if we're in tolerance. That's good. Then we can go to the move screen if our headstock is out of tolerance. This will also tell us our horizontal parallelism is intolerance. We have a green check mark there, but vertically our vertical parallelism is not. So if I was intolerance on the flatness and straightness or the vertical straightness and horizontal straightness, I could go to the move screen. So let's close this out and I would click on move. Okay, now I go to the move screen. It shows me the angle of this headstock relative to the bed. And it's gonna tell me where to put shim, how much shim, and these are live readings. So as I shim this up, you can see the picture changes. Then I can go to step four, which is gonna give me the plots. Now we can look in here and I can see, oh, if I fix this right here, I'd be a lot better off. I'm gonna go on to step five. Here, it's gonna tell me it wants the laser inverted. Now this is where we're, we, we go a little bit farther into the Norman procedure. Now before, when we qualified the laser, we did a little bit of the Norman procedure, but the target also has some error. So what we do with the software is we take a, a normal and an inverted reading with the laser, and we take a normal and inverted reading with the target, and it calculates what those errors are and eliminates it so we, too, we can actually, we can see the actual misalignment. Now they're coordinated, so we, get, we give you graphics. First it wants the laser inverted, so I'm gonna invert the laser, and I'm gonna record that. Put that back to normal, just like it's showing me. It wants the battery on the bottom, and the target, it wants the cable on the top. So again, I'm rotating this, the whole adapter, not just the, the target in the chuck, I'm rotating the whole chuck. So I want, I want to find the center line of this tailstock. That's the object. We want to find out how much air there is in this mounting between that. So we're going to eliminate that. We're going to re record that. Now, if you look at the graph, it wants both of them, battery on the bottom and the cable on the bottom. So we rotate them back. And I can't stress enough when you rotate these, make sure the bubble's in the circle. You're not gonna get repeatability if you don't keep the, the, that, do that right. Okay, we'll record that. Now, these graphics here, we can see that 
We're out of tolerance on the angle and the position. I can go on to step six. This shows me that the target is high by 13 thousandths. It's also high in the back by 40 thousandths, almost 41 thousandths per foot. And again, these are live readings, so if I was to change this, you see the numbers, you see it changing. You're gonna have shim values here that tells you how much the front and back of the tailstock here. We're not correcting this, we've already corrected this. We're gonna be moving the tailstock. This is gonna show me how much to put underneath the front and the back to correct that, as well as side to side. Then we could do the report, we could save the report and bring it up later. Uh, and print it out later. So with that, that's pretty much how we align a lathe using the Lathe 9 program.